Frenzies and welcome back to day 20 of my 30 day vlogging challenge. Da 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 da. I don't know what that was, but anyway, today's vlog is going to be all about my best tips for student teachers. A few days ago on my Instagram, I asked people to just ask me random questions. I was out to purple cake with my husband. That was my last vlog. And I had a whole bunch of people write me and ask me about student teaching. So it must be on the minds of a lot of people. And I thought, you know what? I'll do a separate vlog all about student teaching and here it is, here we go. Sitting on the floor right now of one of my junk storage slash craft rooms. One of, I sound like a billionaire, but I do have a lot of extra rooms and this one is, is, is really insane. <laughs> Anyway, that's why I'm sitting on the floor, but I have these nice boxes behind me that I figured you could kind of focus on. And I keep I kind of like to give mad props to my knitted hat. My Aunt Mary made it. Ooh, the heat just came on right up my shirt. <laughs> So if you're that interested, anyway. this is my podcast. I'm on iTunes and Spotify, and I have a website on Buzzsprout that's in my Instagram profile. I am the Whimsical Teacher Online, and this is my podcast. It's called Healthy Teacher, Happy Teacher, and I talk all about self-care tips for teachers. So if you are a teacher watching this right now, go check out my podcast. Okay, you might get some really awesome dish ideas. on student teaching. Let me tell you a little of my experience with it. First of all, when I was in teacher grad school, the all of the, you know, people in charge, they were saying that we could kind of choose where we wanted a student teach at, but so we should go and sub in all the different schools and figure out which one was the best fit for us. So I did that during, it took me two years to get to that point as I was going part time, but I started subbing in all the schools and then it was time for student teaching. And I turned in my list, I had like five schools on there and one I really wanted to get into so bad. I felt like I was just made for this school. And the other ones were just ones where I got along with everyone. They kept calling me back to sub. I thought I was a perfect fit for these schools. And then every single school was like a no. Nope, sorry, we're not taking student teachers. Nope, bad timing. We have to focus on tests during this, this semester. Nope, sorry, we only do that for spring semester. I was a fall semester student teacher, so a little bit off. Most people do student teaching in the spring. So anyway, I ended up going to a, a school. Like it was they, they were basically like, yeah, sorry, you don't get to choose your school. We're going to choose your school. And so I was like, I wanted to I wanted to student teach either second or third grade. And they were like, yeah, sorry, you don't get to choose that either. We're going to choose the grade. And I was like, wait a second, but I want to be a second or third grade teacher. I should be able to like at least get uh, my internship done in that grade. They're like, sorry, this is your last chance. <laughs> like... Well, you didn't give me any other chances before this. What's going on here? So the experience started out kind of weird for me because I got into my placement late. I didn't get any of the schools I wanted. They placed me in a school 30 miles from my house and I wanted second or third grade and they placed me in fifth grade. It just felt like a hot mess. And then I go in the first day and I was real excited and the administrator of the school is someone that I had a previous relationship with when I worked in group homes. I don't want to completely go into all the details. That administrator might run into this someday, but it was a little awkward because I had worked with a family member of, of the administrators and we already sort of knew each other through this family member. And it, so it was a little bit awkward. It was it was a it was a hairy situation. So anyways, um, but I was just keeping an open mind. I was like, OK, not my ideal location. I definitely don't want to teach fifth grade. <laughs> And I have a weird history with the administrator. What's next? So then 
I get to go meet my lead teacher. This is the person who's going to teach you everything you need to know about being a teacher in the in the real world classroom. And um, he was uh, anywho, my lead teacher. He was really like he was really muscular and in shape. And I could tell that he was like into sports. And he uh, first thing he told me was that he, you know, he majored in, in PE. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. Here I am, like a fat dork, practically failed PE, and now my lead teacher is like a PE junkie. Oh my gosh, I was really freaking out. I was just like, oh my goodness, I am like, I am in the wrong place, and I was sort of panicking. But anyway, my first day in the classroom, um, it went really, really good. And he actually got me a little desk, you know, he's like, you need to have your own desk. That's a big part of being a teacher is having your own desk. He got me a little desk and it actually worked out really great. And I developed a really great relationship with him. And it was a fantastic time. Like I had a great time student teaching. Some bad things happened along the way that I'm going to tell you about. But I wanted to give you my top tips that I learned from that time because a lot of people are miserable during student teaching and they have a horrible they have a horrible relationship with their lead teacher or the kids or their administrator or they have a horrible time at their school. And so I'm hoping some of my tips that I'll give you might help you have an amazing student teaching experience like I had. So let's get on okay. with those. First thing you need to do as a student teacher, first, obviously you need to be flexible. Like I wanted to teach second or third grade in these five schools and I ended up going to a completely different school and having a completely different experience than I ever imagined. So you have to be really flexible. Secondly, you have to realize that you are not there to show off that you can be a teacher. You're basically, you need to like re, like completely rethink the way that you're coming into this job. And, you know, from the student teacher's point of view, it's, it's rough because you just learned all these cool skills and strategies. Maybe you've observed some classrooms. Maybe you've been a sub and you want to get in there and you want to teach and you want to change the world and you want to show everybody. I don't know why I'm like punching you right now, but you want to show everybody what you got and you got to take a chill pill. You got to step back because Really, you are entering someone else's livelihood. You are entering your lead teacher. This is their world that they have built and they've found a way to make it work for them at least that year. And you're you're entering into their world, their rules, their teaching strategies. So you can't come in all like, I'm going to change everything. We look at me because that's going to be the first thing that makes your lead teacher mad. And your whole goal of student teaching should be to make your lead teacher happy. Make your lead teacher happy, then you're going to make your advisors at your school happy because they're going to get good reports about you, and you're going to make that administrator happy, and these are all people you need to get your first teaching job. So you need to completely take the focus off of yourself and put it 110% on your lead teacher. And here's how okay, you do that. I don't want to get to know your lead teacher, not as a teacher, but as a human being. Because after you after you make it through your first year of teaching, it's really about building connections with your coworkers, finding hobbies and passions outside of teaching to relieve the stress of teaching. So like teachers are really cool because they're really well-rounded. They have a lot of interesting side hobbies and maybe side businesses. And so what you want to do is you want to come in and first you know, meet your lead teacher as a person. Don't be thinking, oh, this person is my boss or this person is going to be judging and grading me. Just get to know them as a person. Ask about their family. Learn their kids' names. Um, learn their routines and expectations in their classroom. But learn their kids' names first. Learn their spouse name. name. Learn what they like to do in their free time. Learn what they really think about this school. I mean, come in and approach it as okay this person is 
kind of your boss, right? Like this person is going to be telling you what to do. At times this person is going to make you unhappy, but first get to know the person as a person, not as your boss, not as a teacher who knows everything, not as someone you don't want to offend or upset. Just get to know your lead teacher. That should be your first goal is finding out a little bit about the person. Um, teachers love talking about their kids. They love talking about their family. So find out about that. Get to know, like memorize those kids names so you can ask them every morning like, you know, uh, hey, how's Josie doing or how How's Paul doing? I mean, get to know the, those kids' names like they were students in your class. So that's my first tip: is see your student te or your student teaching, um, your lead teacher, the teacher above you, as a human being, and get to know their personality. Go eat lunch with them, you know, do nice things for them. Really, you're intruding on their space and it's a lot of extra work for them to host you. You're not like doing them a favor really by being there. They don't really get paid enough money to deal with you. So just do whatever you can to make this a happy and comfortable transition. That's tip number tip one. Number two. I mean, sometimes your lead teacher is going to see you as kind of like being a gopher or like you help them prepare for things or they might not really remember this is a person who teachers aren't taught how to be a manager or a boss. So they are not good at managing adults. I mean, they're pretty good at managing little people. But when it comes to managing adults, not every teacher has that skill set. So they might not really know what to do with you at first. Like, do I ask them to go make copies? Do they help me get ready? Like, wh what should I do? My best tip for you, if if they're not really telling you what to do, um, you know, this is, just remember, this is not observation time. You've already done your classroom observations. You're not just sitting back and looking at them teach. You are really going to become a helper. This is your chance to you're learn how classroom. to work with kids. There's kids coming in. Obviously, you're trying to learn those kids' names, but you want to walk around the room Room as much as possible like don't sit down during student teaching you want to complete you want to walk around the room and you want to help the kids and really get a feel for what it's like being a teacher by helping them do their work that's the best thing you could do as a student teacher, I've heard about student teachers, you know, painting their nails while the teacher's teaching or like putting on makeup or playing on their phones because they think it's not their turn to teach. And that's not the case. You are in there to help those kids learn what the teacher is trying to teach them. So you need to throw yourself in and 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 really believe that this is your full-time job and work with the kids one-on-one. -on -one. And eventually when the and then when the, the lead teacher sees like, "Oh, Oh, okay, this person is interested in, in helping kids. Well, I think I can think of more things for them to do. They're going to start placing you with kids and say, okay, you three are going to go work with Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so at the back table. Or, you know, hey, would you mind taking these six kids in the hall and going over these things? They're going to start giving you little jobs to do where you're having a lot more one-on-one -on -one small group teaching time. But until they see that you're really in it for the kids, it might not... They it might not be intuitive to them. You might be their first student teacher. They might not have a game plan for what to do with you while you're there. And I think that's the most awkward thing is like you're waiting for a direction. You're waiting for instruction. But really, it's not their job to teach you how to interact with kids. It's your job to just go start doing it. All right, let's go on to tip three for being a good student teacher. Ask questions when you have them, but don't go overboard on the questions. I mean, at, what I did is throughout the day, if I had questions, I'd write them on a little post-it note. You know, try not to just slam your lead teacher with tons of questions and make it um, more uncomfortable to talk to you. I mean, you want it to be a nice balance of like, oh, you're asking them how to do something, but you're also maybe chit-chatting about what they're going to do on the weekend or, you know, some school event or maybe you're chit-chatting about students in class. I mean, you you don't want it to be all your questions, but you want to get the important ones answered. And I know I was a little timid. I was a little shy about asking. And I know one really big boo-boo I did at the end of my 
you know, four or six weeks or however long I took over the class, I didn't record any grades in the grade book because I wasn't really sure like how to do that, how to go about it. I was recording a lot on papers, but there were a lot of things I graded and then I didn't record the grades anywhere. And I mean, it's just, it's okay. You get so overwhelmed, but I wish I would have just asked from the very beginning, like, okay, how do you want me, like before you take over the class, like how, how, how do you want want your lead teacher to have you enter grades and I mean if they're if they've had other student teachers they're gonna know they're gonna probably tell you but you can't assume you don't know what their history is with student teachers or what's on their plate right now so you got to ask those really important questions you know I would ask you know for you know anything specific with the curriculum grading, parent communication. I mean, these are really big things. Discipline. I mean, don't just assume that you know what they want you to do if they're out of the room and a kid kicks you and calls you a name to your face because that could happen and you need you need to know. Like you, you want to ask them those hard questions up front so it's not like a big thing at the end of your stay there. Um th like, "Hey, where's all your grades in the grade book?" "Ooh, I don't <laughs> anyway, so ask questions, but don't bombard them and prioritize your questions because you're going to have a million and you don't want to bombard them, but you do want to get a good recommendation. Okay, here's my next tip for being a student teacher. This is tip number four. Whatever your teacher, your lead teacher does, you want to do the same thing, like even if you're not required to. So, for instance, if your lead teacher does parent teacher conferences, you want to be a part of those. You want to ask if you can sit at the table and have some input and learn how to do that kind of stuff. If there's an extracurricular activity going on at school, like maybe your lead teacher is a coach or maybe they volunteer for like a movie night. You want to make sure you're there. You want to you want to be kind of you're you're kind of job shadowing this person, but you also want to take on like the duties that they're doing as well. If they go out to recess and have lunch duty recess at lunch or whatever, you want to be out there with them. Don't assume that their extra duties are not a part of your job description because whatever they have to do, you should be doing it alongside of them. Whether it's recess duty, bus duty, extracurricular sports, you got to make the time to show up to those extra things. Those are the kind of moments that are going to make you seem more reliable and that they're going to feel more confident uh, recommending you to a future employer, even if maybe even if things didn't go so smooth, maybe some of your lessons that they observed flopped, maybe you had problems with classroom management, maybe you have problems with them. But like if you show up to all that stuff, they're going to remember it and they're going to know that you put in the extra time and effort. So definitely do those extras. Okay, my fifth and final tip, if you have have something personal going on and you're struggling with something you need to be honest with your lead teacher with the administrator like with with the people in your program like you need to kind of like let that out because it's such a stressful time I mean you're pretty much working for free for four or five months there's not a lot of professions that demand that you work for free and you don't get paid to do an internship um, and it, it can be very stressful uh, I'll tell you a personal story from my student teaching this um, my student taught I believe I'm gonna say nine years ago and wow I can't believe it's almost been 10 years and while I was student teaching the day that I took over the class. And you know, there's like a real turning point. There's a few weeks where you sort of job shadow and help in the classroom. And then there's a point where you should take over that class and it should be your class for X amount of weeks. I think for my program, I had to take over the class for six weeks. So it was my first day taking over the class and um, it was very, very exciting. Uh, and it went really well. Um, and that day, my boyfriend uh, vanished. <laughs> I'm sure you weren't expecting that. But I had been living with a boyfriend and, and a roommate. And my boyfriend vanished with my car and all my money. 
<laughs> while I was student teaching my first day taking over the class. And it was so devastating. I mean, I didn't only get dumped. Like, he just didn't say anything. He just disappeared. He didn't break up with me. He just stole my car, my money, and just vanished, right? I mean, it's a really bad thing to happen during student teaching. And... It's a really embarrassing story to tell you, but this is like, this is real life. This can really happen to you, right? Like people die, you get broken up with, um, you get personally sick, maybe you struggle with mental illness, whatever it is, you need to be able to communicate that with your lead teacher. And so, you know, the day after, well, it took me a couple days to figure out that he was gone. <laughs> Because he had told me he was going on a fishing trip. And so it took me a few days to figure out that like, oh, he's not back with the car yet. And oh, all of his stuff has gone out of the closet. And so it, it took a little bit. But when I figured it out, and I was so devastated, but I had to finish my student teaching, I wasn't gonna quit. After doing after going through this program for over two years, I was not gonna quit. But I knew that I was emotionally distraught. I knew I was messed up in the head. And I mean, I wanted I wanted this bad. So I, I had to sit down and tell my lead teacher. I had to tell him. And I told him and I was I was so embarrassed, you know, because it was just like, I don't know, already I'm like, you know, 28, 29 years old, you know, living with some boyfriend. I mean, when a lot of people at that age are married and already have families. So it was so embarrassing sitting down and telling my lead teacher, but he was so amazing about it. He felt so bad for me. Um, we ended up like we shared, I shared it at lunch table. Like I used, I go lunch with him and I shared it with all the other teachers at the lunch table and they all were just so nice and compassionate, felt bad for me, really cut me some slack to try to get through this. And I mean, that, that's probably the reason why I didn't enter those grades in because I was so devastated. Um, and I was so out of my mind, but you know, I still, because I was honest, and I didn't just let everything fall apart around me. I mean, people were there to like pick me up, like like pretty much strangers that I've only known for five or six weeks were there like comforting me and, you know, trying to help me and check on me every day. It was really cool being able to be honest. So like whatever you're going through, like if something bad happens during student teaching, don't keep it inside you got to tell someone because your work is going to suffer. And if they don't know why it's suffering, then it could prevent you from getting a job someday. Thank goodness I had the common sense to tell my lead teacher because, I mean, obviously my work did suffer. <laughs> I'm getting a little upset talking about it now, not over the breakup, but just like remembering all of that. Like, oh my gosh. I mean, I know I was doing a bad job that last month, but... <sighs> life happens, right? Life happens. And if I wasn't honest, and I didn't share what was going on with my personal life with people, then I would have crumbled and dropped out of the program and I would not be a teacher today. So that is my best advice for you is just you got to be kind of open, even if you're really embarrassed about something. I mean, there are, there are there are bad things that happen to people every day and maybe there's something in the back of your mind you're just like well I don't you know I don't think I should be sharing that like if, if you're even thinking that you probably should go share it you should share it with your lead teacher and just say hey I need to talk to you about something I don't you know I don't want to I don't want to do a bad job I want to get my teaching license I want to finish this but fill in the blank is happening to me and I need your support even if it's just that you're very depressed. Maybe you have seasonal depression, you know, like maybe, you know, maybe you're on antidepressants and they are kind of like starting not to work because you're under so much stress. I mean, whatever's going on in your life, share it, get it out there. You're going to feel better and it's going to take the heat off of you when you mess up because you are going to mess up. All right. Anywho, oh, I'm sitting cross-legged on the floor. I hope that this student teaching real talk helped you because, I mean, there's so, there's so much advice out there that, like, none of that advice helped me. <laughs> it was like, be prepared, show up on time, dress professional. Well, really? You know, no kidding. <laughs> I had no idea. What? I'm supposed to show up on time? There's just, there's a lot of little things like people don't tell you that, that, you know, like, 
you you are kind of an invader in this classroom. <laughs> You're going to tick off your lead teacher. But if you if you if you build some sort of friendship with them and have um, some chit chat with them during lunch, before school, get to know their kids, their families. I mean, really make it about like building a relationship and not just like getting through this job and showing off your skills and how amazing you are because everyone needs to know. <laughs> then you're going to do awesome. You're going to be fantastic. You're going to be a wonderful teacher. You're going to learn so many things along the way. And everything that you learn as a teacher, like during student teaching, it's not necessarily about like organizing a classroom or like delivering a lesson or keeping people engaged or helping people pass tests. It's really about how to deal with people. <laughs> you learn how to deal with administrators and people you've had um, past relationships with, like I had a past relationship with my administrator and, um, you learn how to deal with, you know, brand new adults and brand new kids and parents. And it's all just like learning the right responses to give to kids and parents and other teachers to keep people happy, make, making them move along, making them, making them, um, show some progress. All right, all right frenzies. frenzies. Thank, you. Thank you for tuning in. I love all of you and I'll be back very soon. Maybe in the same spot. I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know. No, 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 no. Oh, find me on Instagram. If you like this video, uh, send me a message or uh, send me a message down below and just let me know. Okay. Bye everybody. Mm -hmm.